So we're back to chemical thermodynamics. We did cover thermal in first semester, but in first semester, we really focused on the first law of thermal and enthalpy. And so just a quick review, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics just looks at the study of energy and its transformations. We also have thermochemistry, so that's thermodynamics. Thermochemistry looks at the amount of heat absorbed or released during a chemical reaction. And that's what we focused on in first semester. We talked about enthalpy. Letter H. And enthalpy tells us how energy can be transferred. We do this in the form of heat. In this chapter, we're going to talk about entropy. Letter S, which talks about why is energy transferred. And we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy. The letter G, which tells us when can energy be transferred. So we've talked about how, now we're gonna talk about why and when. First, we wanna go back and kind of review the first law of thermodynamics and then cover some PV work. You may have covered PV work in first semester. If you did, you can ignore this portion. If you're not familiar with it, you don't remember it, or you haven't learned it, it's a good module to go through. So first, thermodynamics versus kinetics. We have covered the kinetics chapter fairly recently, and we want to understand the difference between thermo and kinetics. Thermodynamics is looking at where was I, where am I now? What's my energy? What's my disorder? Or my microstates? Is this reaction spontaneous or not spontaneous? Is this reaction endothermic, as pictured here, or exothermic. Kinetics is looking at how did I get there. So while thermo is just your initial and final states, just will the reaction go spontaneously, what spontaneous means is if the reaction is started, it may need a spark to start it, but once started, will the reaction continue on its own, or will you have to keep supplying energy to keep the reaction going? That's what thermo is looking at. But kinetics is looking at how did I get there? What's my energy barriers? What's my mechanism? What process did it go through? What particles collided with what particles in what order for the reaction to go forward? As a review of the first law of thermodynamics, the first law tells us that energy is conserved. Delta E is equal to Q plus W. Q being heat, W being work. It's a law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change form. The total energy of the universe is constant. In any process, spontaneous or non-spontaneous, it doesn't matter, the total energy of the system and surroundings is constant. You can never win, you can only break even, and there is no free lunch. Another way to think about this is that if you have an isolated system, Isolated means cannot exchange energy with its surroundings. Then the energy of that system is constant. We can say that the change in energy of the universe is equal to zero because it's constant. This will equal the change in energy of system plus the change in energy of the surroundings. So energy can be transferred between system and surroundings, but overall, the overall change is zero because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. We will talk about how we can transfer energy 
And in the nuclear chapter, we'll actually see how mass can be converted to energy for nuclear energy. But overall, we cannot create nor destroy things. We can only change form. Heat lost by a system is equal to the heat gained by the surroundings. This is an important consequence of the first law. So energy transfer itself. We've talked about how the change in energy is equal to Q plus W. Q being heat, W being work. We're going to see very soon how work is also equal to negative P delta V. Negative pressure times a change in volume. But we can use the ideal gas law. We know PV equals NRT. We can substitute that in into this equation. This is like P delta V delta NRT because the pressure is constant here. So I can actually derive all three of these relationships. The gas constant here being 8.314 joules per mole K because we are dealing with energy. I want you to think about the system. Pretend you are the system. Okay, so you've got this person here. You are the system. If heat is given to you, you are positive. You have gained that heat. If you give away your heat, you are negative. You've lost that heat. You've lost that form of energy in the form of heat. If work is done on you, it is positive. You didn't do anything, but you reaped the rewards of someone else's work, some other system's work. If you have someone cook you dinner, they have done the work, you reap the benefits. Work was done on you. You are positive. You have gained that. If you did the work, if you did all the cooking, your work has been expended. It is negative. So think about yourself as a system and if you've gained it or lost it, and you should always get the signs of W and Q correct. How can we lose, um, how can a system lose energy? It can be converted to heat. It, again, Q is heat, or you can use it to be doing work, which is W. The change in energy is a state function. Remember, state functions don't care about how I got there. They're not path dependent. They only care that you're there. When I go to work, work does not care how I got there. I have multiple routes I can drive to get to work. The university does not care as long as I am there to teach my students, to hold office hours, to answer questions, etc. As long as I'm doing my job, they do not care how I actually got there. My gas mileage, my car, etc. cares how I actually got there and the path I took to get there. Did I take a toll road? Did I not take a toll road? Did I drive any freeway? Did I drive straight streets? Did I get stuck behind a slow moving vehicle? All of these things are path dependent. But the university doesn't care about all that. It just cares that I'm there. That is a state function. It only cares about the state you are in at that moment, the state you started at, the state you finished at. And what is the difference between those two states? Note that Q and W are not state functions because Q and W are path dependent. It matters the process that they went through to get there for Q and W. So pressure volume work. Many chemical reactions are carried out in an open container under constant pressure conditions. Most students see this as coffee cup calorimetry. This type of work is called pressure volume work or PV work. So a little bit of definition work here. Work is equal to a force acting over a distance. Or W equals FD. F times D, F being force, D being distance. Remember the definition of pressure, though, from when we covered gas laws. Pressure is equal to a force being applied over an area. You've got some kind of area, and you're applying a force to that area. Where this is hitting, that's causing pressure. 
In gas laws, we learned about how pressure was being caused by the particles, the gas particles themselves hitting the walls of the container that they were in or the walls of the containment. But in generally speaking, pressure is equal to the force being applied over a specific area. We're going to rearrange this equation to solve for force and we get force is equal to pressure times area. Substitute this in to our equation, W equals force times distance. We now have W or work equal to pressure times area times distance. Now, let's think about this with a cylindrical piston. That's what's pictured here. We've got this piston here that can push down on the system or the gas can push up on it. So for cylindrical piston, I've got this work equals pressure times area times distance, except that this, um, the, whatever is in here, this gas that's in here is pushing up on the piston and it's causing a change in height. That change in height, if I consider that per area, is equal to a change in volume. So change in height here is related to the change in volume because it's the change in height times the change in area is a change in the total volume. I can plug that in for the distance that it moved. Work is equal to pressure times area times distance. The volume of the cylindrical position, area times height or change in height, that is equal to my change in volume. So I can substitute this in and say that work is equal to negative P delta V. Substituting in for that, right? Substituting in delta V. Work is equal to pressure times delta V. Why negative sign here? Why did I put a negative here? I use a negative sign because the change in volume is positive, meaning the system did work on the surroundings. Therefore, work is negative because it did that work. The first law, delta equals Q plus W. I can plug that into here, delta E equals Q minus P delta V. Now, if I'm under constant volume conditions, W would be equal to P times change in V, except under constant volume conditions, W would be equal to zero, or change in V would be equal to zero, causing W to be equal to zero. So under constant volume conditions, delta equals Q sub V. Remember, under constant pressure conditions, and we'll see this on the next slide as well, but we solved this last semester where we found delta H was equal to Q sub P when I had constant pressure conditions. So under constant pressure, I can solve for delta H. Under constant volume, I can solve for delta E. It's equal to Q sub V, meaning in sub V meaning constant volume, where Q sub V, heat flow under constant volume conditions. What is an example of a constant volume calorimeter? Constant pressure is coffee cup. Constant volume is a bomb calorimeter. If I'm releasing all this energy, but I'm not letting the volume expand at all, it's creating a bomb. And a very useful conversion that we will use in this chapter is 101.3 joules equals one liter atmosphere. Um, how do you remember that? I don't know, to be honest with you. I remember it because back in Minnesota, the radio station I listened to was 101.3 KDWB. And um, I listened to that for 20 years before I moved to Texas. So I'll always remember 101.3 because of the radio station. I don't know how you remember it, but you need to remember the conversion. So 101.3 joules equals one liter atmosphere. Just a little chart to kind of clear up or further solidify, hopefully, what we just talked about. So we know that work is equal to negative P delta V. And that should be a lowercase w. Lowercase w's are hard for me to write. If the gas expands, change 
change in volume is positive. Therefore, work was done by the system on the surroundings and W will be negative. If the gas contracts or compresses or gets smaller volume, change in volume is a negative number and work will be positive because the surroundings do work on the system. So just these slides were also presented in first semester content, but just as a quick review, Q is your heat at constant volume, delta V equals zero, delta E equals Q plus W. We can get um, delta E equals Q sub V, heat at constant volume. Constant pressure, Q equals the enthalpy of the system. You can see the derivations here. Delta H equals Q sub P at constant pressure. This is a bomb calorimeter. This is a coffee cup calorimeter. No, you don't have to use coffee cups, but they're the most commonly used in a freshman level class. And then of course your enthalpy change at constant pressure is equal to your heat. Enthalpy being your delta H, which shows you how the energy is being transferred. And then we're gonna look at delta S and delta G for uh, when, or, uh, when and why. So W for work, again, just a little bit of review here. W equals negative P, external, the external pressure times change in volume for gases. You can read through this. Most important thing on this slide, in my opinion, to remember is this conversion factor. Let's go ahead and work a few examples, though. A certain reaction performed at one atmosphere of pressure gives off 6.2 kilojoules of heat. During the reaction, the volume expands from one 0 0.00 liters to 44.2 liters. What is delta E for this reaction? Well, I know delta E is equal to Q plus W. So that's what I want to find. I'm trying to find delta E. What is my Q? What is my W? Well, my Q, it tells me that it gives off, this part's also important, gives off 6.20 kilojoules of heat. So I know I've got 6.20 kilojoules here, but is it positive or negative? It says gives off. Gives off means that it is the system losing that heat, so it will be a negative value. Work. I don't have anything specific to work here, but I do have volume and I do have pressure. And I know work is equal to negative P delta V. So negative 1.00 atmosphere times delta V, which is final minus initial, 44.2 liters minus 1.00 liters. But that's not going to get me the same units anywhere, right? So I'm going to have to remember that I also have conversion. 101.3 joules is equal to one liter atmosphere. This is in joules. Q is in kilojoules. I need them in the same units. So I'm going to convert Q to kilojoule or to joules. Negative 62 zero, zero, but I'm going to underline this zero here just to keep track of where my um, sig figs are and write joules. Now I can plug all this stuff together. Delta E equal to negative 6200, zero, zero, underline my sig figs, joules, minus 1.00 zero, zero atmosphere times 44.2 liters minus 1.00 zero, zero liters times 101.3 joules divided by one liter atmosphere. This gives me a calculated answer of negative 10576 joules, but I need to think about my sig figs right here. So 44.2 liters minus one liter gives me 43.2 liters. That is accurate to the tens place. Now I'm doing multiplication, so three sig figs. This is accurate to the tens place though. So I'm gonna need this accurate to the tens place here as well. 
This is equal to the tenths, like one tenth. And this is accurate to the tens. It's hard for me to say those differences in words. I need it accurate because I'm doing subtraction here. The final answer can only be accurate to the tens place. So it will be accurate to right here. And to check the other one, I didn't actually write that down. Let me make sure. Sorry, cat. My cat was underneath the blanket. It's quite chilly today. And I just leaned over across her to get my calculator, and she's not happy about it. Okay, so this answer is tens place. But when I do the multiplication here, I get 4, 3, 7, 6. 3 sig figs, tens place here as well. So tens place, tens place. Overall, negative 10580 joules. Or I can write negative 1.058 Hold on, I put the decimal place in the wrong spot. 10.58 kilojoules. Either answer is completely correct here. But I do need to keep it because of sig figs here. So again, the subtraction here led me here. Three sig figs overall of, um, because of multiplication. So here, which is the tens place, this is also accurate to the tens place because it was accurate here to the tens place. So my final answer is accurate to the tens place. Students lose a lot of points on sig figs on these calculations and it's not intentional. It's just we're mixing a lot of rules up and you guys kind of forget what they are. Okay, a balloon is being inflated to its full extent by heating the air inside of it. In the final stages of this process, the volume of the balloon changes from 4.00 times 10 to the 6 liters to 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6 liters by addition of 1.3 times 10 to the 8th joules of energy as heat. Assuming the balloon expands against a constant pressure of 0.96 atmospheres, calculate delta E for the reaction, or for the process, and it gives me the conversion. 1 liter atmosphere equals 101.3 joules. Um, 101.3 joules. So I'm trying to find delta E again. Delta E is equal to Q plus W. Q here. Q is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the eighth joules. And this will be a positive number because it says addition of. It's being added to the system, so it's positive. W negative P delta V because I've got pressure and I've got volume in here I'm going to use work as pressure volume negative pressure 0 0.96 atmosphere times the change in volume 4.50 times 10 to the sixth liters minus 4.00 times 10 to the sixth liters when I do the subtraction here 4.50 times 10 to the sixth minus 4 times 10 to the 6th. This gives me 5.0 times 10 to the 5th liters. And if you're unclear on how to do sig figs with scientific notation, you have two options. You can take it out of scientific notation, or you can learn to read your sig figs with scientific notation. I have a module, but it's quite a ways back. It's in Chapter 1, Module 1D, I believe, that goes through how to read um, sig figs with scientific notation. And it makes it an easier, faster process than undoing these numbers. Go watch it if you're confused or take them out of scientific notation. I don't care. But this number here is accurate to the sixth place, which means fifth and fourth. Fourth is like the thousands place. Fifth, um, fifth and sixth. Sixth is like the one um, hundred thousands place. So this is if this was a number. So this is accurate to the one thousand place. Not one one thousandths, but one thousand. Same here. 6, 5, 4. This is accurate to the um, 10 to the 4th place, or the thousandths place. When I do the subtraction, I get 5 times 10 to the minus 5th, but this is minus 5, this is minus, or this is um, 10 to the 5th, this is 10 to the 4th. So this has, to, I have to include a 0 here to keep my sig figs. This limits this to 2 sig figs for the answer here. And so 5.0 times um, 10 to the 5th times point. 96 gives me an answer of let's see negative 4.8 times 10 to the fifth 
And this is leader atmosphere. That's just my work. That's not the final answer. That's just the work done in the system. I needed two sig figs there. I've got two here and two here. I keep two sig figs. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my delta E equation. Delta E is equal 1.3 times 10 to the eighth joules minus 4.8 times 10 to the fifth liter atmosphere. And don't forget your conversion. 101.3 joules per one liter atmosphere. Just to keep track of sig figs, I'm going to do this in steps. 1.3 times 10 to the minus 8 joules. If I take 4.8, negative 4.8 times 10 to the fifth times 101.3 joules per liter atmosphere, I get negative 4.86 times 10 to the seventh joules. But I need two sig figs here because I have two here. So this is accurate to right here, to this eight. Now checking, um, doing the subtraction here, 13, um, 1.3 times 10 to the eighth minus 4.86 times 10 to the minus seventh. Hold on, I didn't actually write that answer down. 1.3 times 10 to the minus eighth minus 4.86 exp negative 7. I'm keeping that 4.86 just to keep um, from rounding error on the calculation. My calculator tells me this is 81400000, which is the same as 8.14 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But this is not the correct number of sig figs. I need the correct sig figs. So how am I going to find that? I'm going to look again and see where my answers are at. This says 8. So 8, 7. This is accurate to the 7th place. 7, 6. I can only have something accurate to the 7th place, which is this. So this will be 8 times 10 to the 7th joules. Again, if you're confused, take it out of scientific notation. You can do it that way. It's the long way. I don't care. I just don't like doing it the long way. The volume of an ideal gas is decreased from 9.75 liters to 1 liter at a constant pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. What is the work associated with this process? So I don't care about delta E this time, I only care about work. Work is equal to negative P delta V. Negative pressure, 1.50 atmosphere. Volume, it's decreased from 9.75 to 1 liter, which means 1 liter is my final volume and 9.75 is my initial volume. But work does need to be reported in energy units. 101.3 joules divided by one liter atmosphere. When I take that one minus point, um, 0.975, this is negative 8.75 and it is accurate to that second decimal place. So I've got three sig figs in all of my numbers here. So negative 1.50 times negative 8.75 times 101.3. My work is equal to 1329 joules, but I can only have three sig figs. So I can either say 1330 joules or I can say 1.33 kilojoules. Doesn't matter to me unless it specifies you can put it in any units, um, joules or kilojoules, it doesn't matter. Calculate delta E for the following reaction for which delta H is equal to negative 2.17 or 217.1 kilojoules. How am I going to do that? I know delta E is equal to Q plus W. I've got Q. This is equal to Q. Under constant pressure conditions, Q equals delta H. So I've got Q. But how am I going to find W? I know W is negative P delta V, but I don't have pressure and volume. I do, however, have other information here. I know that P delta V is equal to change in N RT because of the ideal gas law. So I can say this is equal to negative delta N RT. R is my gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole K. 
And it doesn't tell me the temperature directly, but it does tell me. When you see the little circle here above the delta H, that means that it's under its standard conditions, and it's implied that it is 25 degrees C, which is 298K. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my question. Only thing I'm missing now is change in number of moles, delta N. Delta N is for gas molecules specifically because I'm dealing with the ideal gas law. Makes sense, right? I got to use gases. My final is one mole of gas. Initial is two moles of gas. I produce one mole of water vapor. I consume two moles of HCl gas. So overall, the change here is negative, negative one moles. So delta E naught is equal to Q, which is negative 217.1 kilojoules, minus change in number of moles, negative one mole, times my R constant. That is in joules, though, and my Q value is in kilojoules, so I'm going to say 8.314 times 10 to the minus third kilojoules per mole K, either convert everything to joules or everything to kilojoules, I don't care which way, times 298K. Always check your units because this is where I find I forget to write things down. So I've got kilojoules minus kilojoules. We're good there. Okay, let me go ahead and plug this in my calculator. 8.314 times 10, negative 3, times 298, times negative 1, This here gives me negative 2.477572 kilojoules, but of course that is not the correct number of sig figs. I need three sig figs here. Then I take my negative 217.1 and subtract the negative of that answer, or subtract that answer, which really adds them together. And I get delta E naught equal to negative 214.622428. But again, sig figs matter here. This is accurate to the um, tenths place. This is accurate to the hundredths, so I can only go to the tenths place. So negative 214.6 kilojoules. So the delta E for this reaction would be negative 214.6 kilojoules. And our last example for this module, a system gains thermal energy and does work on the surroundings. What are the values of Q and W for this system? This is supposed to be a multiple choice question, but I somehow left off the multiple choice portion on the slide. I apologize. What I want you to think about, though, is, again, make yourself the system. Give yourself some eyeballs, nose, some mouth, some hair if you want, you know. Make it real fancy here. But... If heat is going in to the system, you're happy. If heat is leaving the system, you're losing it. You're losing that heat. If work is leaving the system, if you've done work, then you're losing that, um, you're losing that energy in the form of work. You've done that. If work is being done to you, you're positive. You're gaining the benefit, the energy of that work being done. So here it's telling me a system gains thermal energy, which means energy is going into you and does work on the surroundings. What are the values of Q and W for the system? Q is positive. W is negative. What will delta E be? I don't know. It depends on how much heat was gained and how much work was done. You can't answer that question right now. You cannot tell me if delta E is positive or negative. It depends on your system.